Okay, so uh, I want to talk about push-ups uh, for a second. Uh, it's super important for those of you in isolation. It's an excellent form of exercise. If you want to stay in Krav shape, I strongly recommend it. It really helps out with different parts of your body and uh, as, as Kravists, as fighters, it's essential. So you may have seen me doing them around the academy at any given time, any sort of pause or break I have, I drop and I do 25 or 20 because I promised myself that for this year I'll be doing at least between 200 to 260 per day on my knuckles. Now that's really important to remember because if you're past the point of palm striking, if you're punching, if you're already starting to condition your knuckles, just know knuckle push-ups are important. Let me tell you why. People on the street when you're in real combat, they're not gonna feel like our pads. They're not gonna feel like uh, our focus mitts, all right? Unless you're fighting uh, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man or uh, the Michelin Man, people are uh, made out of bone covered in very thin layers of flesh. So if you're gonna punch someone in the head, you're basically smashing your bones into theirs, and so you better have conditioned knuckles, okay? That's why my knuckles look as ugly as they do. That's why they're discolored and callous because of the knuckle push-ups. So you're gonna start off slow, start off with a few per day, and then you can increase it from there gradually. But you have to commit to doing that, all right? And I suggest this is for adults and for kids. What I tell our kids is to start doing uh, do five push-ups when you wake up in the morning, five push-ups before you go to bed. And before you know it, it turns into 10, it turns into 15. And I think adults do the same thing. So right now I'm gonna show you the basic position for, for push-ups. And a lot of people get this wrong. Uh, unless you're doing this on purpose and you're training a certain muscle group, you don't wanna splay your, your arms out this much. All right, because when we're punching, we're not really punching like rock'em, sock'em robots. We don't really do this. Our punches are more because our magen is inside, our elbows are inside, we're punching from a more natural position, all right? Not karate style, but with my arms slightly bent, uh, more, more so 45 degree angle here, it's a very natural position for punching. So to do that, to strengthen that muscle group, I try to keep my hands by my chest. So if, you, if I bring my body all the way down, my fists would be by my pectoral muscles, all right? Now when I come up, just like this to start, my body is straight and I don't want to put anything on the ground except the balls of my feet and my fists. So when I come straight up and you see me do this, my arms are rubbing against my torso as I do this. I try to look up, try to breathe. If you're counting with your kids, you can have them count in Hebrew so they're still you know, in class mode. And that's basically the, the most basic form of knuckle push-up that we do. Now I'm doing them on the mat. Once you're done uh, doing them on a softer surface, I strongly recommend doing them on a harder surface. It's not altogether all that, uh, that difficult. Uh, wood, tile, I definitely like to do at least uh, 100 of those on hard floor just to start conditioning. For kids in our system, they don't do knuckle push-ups until orange belt. So if they're gonna do uh, the regular push-ups, I recommend they start with their hands open Kids have a tendency to try to bring their hands inward like this or outward like that. Now there are people who do them in odd configurations, but that's because they're practicing push-ups for a specific purpose, a specific muscle group. Don't have them do that for now. Have them just put their hands out here and make sure that they understand that they can't have their butts all the way up and they can't just try to go down into this yoga pose. That, that's not a push-up. They're gonna have to bend their arms and come right back up and that's what's gonna constitute a proper push-up. You'll see that they'll start doing this as they fatigue, or they'll start putting their knees down, or they won't use their arms at all, okay? You want them to go down uniformly and come right back up. And you wanna have kids do these regularly and make sure you only count the ones that are really well done. All right, you want the kids to rush. Another thing I've noticed is that when kids do push-ups, they'll count uh, going up and going down as two. So make sure they become accustomed to understanding that up and down equals one, okay? Once you get better and better at this, and you've already gone to knuckle push-ups, or you're still doing uh, open hand, you can increase difficulty by putting something behind and then propping your feet up on that. You can put your feet up against the wall. You can do pipe push-ups. You can do handstand push-ups. You can do wide push-ups to get more, more chest action there. Um, we're gonna get into that in a future uh, video, but. I'm gonna go over some of the ones that we do for the kids' classes, and you can do this yourself as well. So, because I'm working on my knuckles, I'm just gonna start this way. Oh, and a note on knuckles. When kids are learning to do knuckle push-ups, 
they may have a tendency to put their thumb on the inside. You definitely don't want this. This is not a very strong structure. And to compensate, they're gonna put too much pressure on their wrist and they're gonna bend their wrists and hurt themselves. Uh, you don't want the thumb out either. They'll do this quite a bit. You don't wanna put the thumb out there. You're doing it just as if you were punching. I shouldn't be able to see your fingernails. You're not this way, but your fingernails are in. Uh, thumb is in front of the digits and it's here. Notice that if your child's uh, wrists are buckling, you probably wanna have them go back to hands until they strengthen their wrists, all right? Now, the most basic one I already showed you, up and down, but you can also have kids do it where they put one foot and point their toes, not all the way up, just here. So when they go down and up, only one foot is off the ground. Then they can switch and do the same thing again. That's a very basic variation that we do in class. One of the other variations that we do, we call them lion push-ups. I guess we called it that because uh, uh, our mascot is Ari the Lion. I don't remember what their original name was, but basically they put their hands down and I bring on my way down my knee to my elbow. My foot is still off the ground. Come back up and do the same thing here. Come back up, do the same thing here, come back up, do the same thing here, come back up, same thing here, come back up. That's a bit more advanced, but what you can do is you can challenge your kids to see who has the most... Uh, most push-ups in a, in a single session or who has the best form. I strongly recommend during this time of isolation to come up with some sort of system where you're encouraging your kids to get into this habit. One of the biggest problems that we have in America, even before all of this madness, was that uh, we just don't stay in shape. As a society, we play in the playground and then we become sedentary. We go to college, we forget about PE or phys ed, we forget about gyms. And then into adulthood that we just don't keep up with it. So you want to get your kids into some sort of habit where they know that, ah, you know what? I sat indoors all day. I feel, something feels off. I want to go out and do something. That's a healthy thing. So get them started on this. They might fight you on it from time to time, but you want to make sure that they get into the habit of staying in shape. All right, so uh, I would, would like to invite you all, parents and kids, to post your best push-up session. So start with five or 10 or 20, all right? Video that, post it up and encourage others to do a push-up challenge. Challenge them during the time of self-imposed isolation. And let's see if we can't get all of the Yitmo family, everybody on our Facebook page to do at least 20 push-ups per day. If we're gonna be indoors, if we're gonna be isolated, we might as well use this time to get in better shape, okay? I encourage all of you to do that, thanks.